the first troops from the East African Community Regional Force began withdrawing from Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo on Sunday. Reporter Al Katanti, Sibayatibiti Jaffa, in Eastern DRC, tells me that the troops are leaving at the request of DRC President Felix Chisekedi, who has accused them of cooperating with the M23 rebels. Three aircraft took off from the International Airport of Goma Sunday, 3rd December, with 98 Kenyan soldiers each. And this is because the East African Community Regional Force starts withdrawing from the DRC as the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo didn't renew their mandate. The first plane took off from Goma early morning at 4, and people of Goma didn't know about what is going on. I'm sure um, many will be wondering why are they withdrawing when the violence in the East continues? It's because the mandate of the East African Community Regional Force will expire in one week and the force can't stay in a country without any accreditation as the government of DRC didn't allow them to get one more mandate, they have to leave. And you must also know that these forces had already lost the confidence of Congolese people who accused them to support M23 or to work with M23 instead of engage fighting against rebels. I'm wondering what has been the reaction what, or what is the reaction in the Eastern Congo about the withdrawal? People are happy in the East Democratic Republic of Congo. I'm in Goma where I could hear people singing with the joy because Kenyans start leaving. You know, people of DRC was asking the government of Congo to make end to the agreement which sent this force in DRC. And this decision of the President Chisakedi to do not give one more chance to this force will be a positive thing in his campaign because people will remember that the government did what we liked. As you and I know, the violence in the East continues. So what is the plan now, especially for the government of the DRC, following the withdrawal of the uh, East African forces? What is the plan? Violence still ongoing in the field. And the government of DRC have not given any plan yet. But from sources, we heard that after the total withdrawal of this force, Another force will come from SADC, the South African country's force, will uh, join FRDC to make end of these threats from all rebel groups, such as M23 and other local groups. You must remember that in the first M23 war, which was in 2012 and 2013, SADC forces fighted alongside with FRDC to chase out M23. The Somali government has welcomed the lifting of the decades-long arms embargo imposed by the United Nations Security Council in January 1991 during that country's civil war. Hussein Sheikh Ali is the national security advisor for the president of Somalia. He tells reporter Haroun Marouf of the VOA Somali service that the government is now free to acquire heavy weapons in the fight against the militant group Al-Shabaab. It's a huge milestone that Somalia have uh, achieved uh, over 31 years. Somalis have been looking for this moment. And we thank every entity partner that have uh, helped us to reach this level. And uh, today, Somalia believes we got a piece of our sovereignty back. And what's the next step for you? Do you have weapons lined up for you to buy or to receive from friendly countries? Yes, we have a plan uh, that uh, we have completed our national security architecture. We have uh, devised uh, a strategic plan of uh, implementing of the architecture. And we have uh, a conference in New York 12th December where international partners are gathering to support uh, Somalia's security uh, sector development. So that would be uh, part of uh, acquiring uh, adequate weapons in order to take uh, over responsibility of uh, from Artemis December 2024. How does this move help the fight against Al-Shabaab? It's going to be a game changer. Uh, Shabaab and uh, the security uh, forces of Somalia 
had a, a, a similar weaponry, mainly a small weaponry, uh, and it uh, was a more or less in the uh, battlefield that uh, the winner uh, was not uh, very clear, although we managed to win over uh, a large uh, junk of territory last year and, uh, and this year. But this will be a game changer for the security uh, forces of Somalia, where they will have the upper hand uh, in terms of uh, weaponry and the battlefields. Hussein Sheikh Ali is the National Security Advisor for the President of Somalia. He spoke from Mogadishu with viewers Somali service reporter Harun Marouf. To find out more about what the lifting of the arms embargo means for Somalia and the East African region, viewers Douglas Umpuga reached Abdi Ismail Samatar, a professor at the University of Minnesota and a senator in the Somali parliament. It's uh, both a blessing and a curse, I think, that uh, the lifting of the arms embargo. If Somalia had a disciplined, organized military force that's dedicated to the country and not to sectarian projects, then this would have given the country an opportunity to take uh, the war up uh, to al-Shabaab face on with resources necessary to do that. But we don't have sort of a disciplined, uh, centralized, organized, uh, professional army. And so my concern is if these weapons uh, fall into the hands of what I call the merchants of war, who are not disciplined, organized, purposefully driven by the collective national agenda, then that may create more mess. And I hope that uh, the country will put together a formula that will ensure who is going to provide the weapons, where is it coming from, and how it's being used uh, in order to be able to take advantage of this opportunity. So it's an open uh, case as to whether this will become a blessing or a curse, my friend. This lifting of the embargo comes a week uh, after Somalia joined the East African Community Regional Bloc. Would that maybe help? Well, I mean, the question becomes uh, cooperative arrangements among African countries, either regionally or continentally, has the potential of jump starting our region and our continent. So uh, at the first blush, this is a sort of a wonderful opportunity, both for East Africa and Somalia as well. The question here again is Somalia, has its economy has been in shambles for almost 35 years or more. And the question is, as long as the productive sector of the country where the vast majority of the population needs to be employed is not up to snuff to be able to take advantage of that bigger market of almost 300 people. So again, it's an opportunity. The question is whether that opportunity will be realized both by Somalis and Af- uh, East Africans in the EC is an open question again. But it's a slow movement towards the continental unity. Adi Ismail Samata is a professor at the University of Minnesota and a senator in the Somali parliament. He spoke with Douglas Umpuga from Minneapolis. The military leaders of Burkina Faso and Niger said Saturday they would quit the G5 anti-jihadist force in Africa's Sahel area, the latest blow to the fight against insurgents in one of the world's most troubled regions. The G5, created in 2014, has secured only migri results, with Mali also quitting the original five-nation force last year, also in the wake of a military coup. Leaders of the five countries agreed to deploy a joint anti-terror task force, backed by France in 2017. But the military rulers of Burkina Faso, Niger, and Mali have also accused Paris of having an outsized role after years of French deployments on the uh, territories. Burkina Faso and Niger have decided in full sovereignty to quit all instances of the G5 Sahel, including the joint force as of November 29th, two countries said in a statement. The organization is failing to achieve its objectives worse 
respect the legitimate ambitions of our countries of making the G5 Sahel a zone of security and deployment are hindered by institutional red tape from a previous era, which convinces us that our process of independence and dignity is not compatible with G5 participation in its current form. In a veiled reference to France, they added that the G5 Sahel cannot serve foreign interests to the detriment of our people and even less the dictates of any power in the name of a partnership that treats them like children, denying the sovereignty of our people. Something from nothing. Life changes just open the door. But one thing's certain.